This video is actually mostly for parents who take their kids' stuff away from them to, to like put them in a timeout or discipline them. Reason being is because objects hold emotion. Objects hold feeling and energy. And energy is just whatever intention, feeling you put into a certain object. How do you do that? Uh, just I'm going to give a few examples just so people know. I found these glasses. They're good to wear uh, when I'm in sunlight and I don't want to see what my eye color looks like. So I put these on. I found these while I was cleaning my friend's garage with my friend. And I'm going to use these as an example. When a raver, and I'm not saying every raver has these glasses, but when a raver puts glasses like this on, then they go to a rave, and maybe they do uh, ecstasy or something. Not every raver does ecstasy. <laughs> every time they put these glasses on, they will get the feeling of party, or they will get the feeling of the emotions they experienced while they were wearing these glasses. And after years, or maybe, um, sorry, they're watching a loud movie in the other room, maybe years of wearing these and doing the same thing will, in a way, cause an anchor, which in business terms, an anchor is a stimuli, a stimulus, to where when you put something on or you hold something, you feel a certain emotion. Businessmen do this to get what they want. Mostly get compliance. So, I'm going to give another example. This is why you should not take your kids' stuffed animals away from them to discipline them. Talk to them instead. Stuffed animals for children hold lots of energy, lots of emotion, lots of everything. So as a parent, when you either break that thing or throw it away, you're ripping a part of your child out. Does that make sense? If when you're younger, you have a stuffed animal, or you have a lot of stuffed animals, but one in particular you play with the most, it's your favorite. So your parents tell you you're too old. This actually happened to me. And honestly, I don't think any child should have their toys taken away. I think every, no, I know that every child should choose when they want to stop using it. Because eventually they'll get interested as they grow in other avenues of things. So when a kid plays with a, his favorite stuffed animal, he gets excited, or she gets excited. She gets a, or he gets a, a stimulus of dopamine, of excitement, of reward. When he's playing with or she's playing with stuffed animals. So if the parent takes that away, they're taking away something the kid developed and put time into. Does that make sense? Are you still with me on this? I am honestly going to let my children choose when they're ready to give up things. As a parent, you should do what your parents never did for you. You shouldn't say to yourself that my parents were this way, so I have to act this way. That is the worst way of thinking. It's getting hotter in here. When I was a little kid, Here's a really good example. I had one of those medical bracelets on my hand. 
and it had my medical number. So if I ever had a seizure, they could pick me up and read my medical number on them. I, after a while, took it off and threw it away because the stimulus to the medical bracelet reminded me of having seizures. Because every time I had a seizure, they would take it off, look at it, and put it back on me. It was almost like a prison lock. So eventually, I just threw it away. I said, I'm not wearing this anymore. And my family's just like, okay, uh, he's getting older. We can't stop him. Let him do what he wants. So, I have been, when I was a kid, I was so paranoid about wearing things, like wearing bracelets, wearing necklaces, wearing jewelry, like piercings. Why? Because it has a stimulus. It reminds me of when I was imprisoned by that medical bracelet. You get what I mean? When you have a stimulus of something, when you're young, it can affect you when you're older. Now, with subliminals, you can erase those memories. It's possible. But do you really want to? Because when you have bad memories and you have become a better person as an adult, you want to be able to remember those memories and say, hey, even though I went through all that stuff, I improved myself over time and became a better person. I'm not saying that's how you need to think, but that's honestly how people should think. They should become better than their previous parents. And if the parents were great people, be like them. But if, an, if a kid is born angry and mad, because it can happen, there are brain disorders that can make you lack any empathy and the parents could be completely nice people but the kid isn't so the kid will have like different uh, agendas per se <laughs> So yes, objects hold energy. A big thing with um, subliminal subliminals is that sometimes there are anchors used, which are can either be hand motions, objects. Emojis, yes. It, you can use emojis as an anchor, as a stimulus to someone. See, every time, if, there's, if there is a certain person that you want something from, and this is kind of dark, but it works because it's an anchor, and I learned it from business, reading business books. If you, if you say something extremely nice to someone in a text, Put a certain emoji, and if you don't know what an emoji is, it's a smiley face or an icon. Put a certain emoji, and every single time you text them something nice, put that emoji. So eventually, when you want something from them, you ask them a question of the thing you want. Will you take me here on this day? And you put that emoji what will happen is they will feel that stimulus, they will feel that good feeling that they got from that icon of when you were saying all those nice things, and that is anchoring. When you, over time, prep someone to a certain thing, so they feel a certain emotion to a certain thing. Kids get anchored with stuffed animals. Adults usually get anchored with objects they buy on Amazon. Not me. I rarely buy from Amazon. But that is 
it's beyond the point. What I'm mostly trying to say is that anchoring works on anyone, regardless of their age. And if anyone says this, they say that your eyes are your eyes are are dark or they're black. No. I just have really shitty lighting in my bedroom. If you were able to see my eyes, I could tell you right now that they are very, very light brown. Yeah. But they're becoming a different color, which you won't know because I'm not telling. Also, that 4th of July subliminal I was going to make for everyone. I am actually just keeping it and watching it with me because there are a lot of things in it that I need to change myself with. Like it's a personal subliminal. But if you give me in the description, if you watch this far, if you give me in the description some subliminals that you want me to make, I will start making them after I'm done making this one. Because I, I honestly, it would take too long and my computer isn't strong enough to make two versions of the subliminal. It's a good subliminal. The, it blocks receptors in, uh, in your DNA. So one, you, you, your bone density just keeps increasing. Do you hear that? They're watching a really loud movie because my grandparents can't hear. Their, their hearing is terrible, so they turn the volume to like way high. You can probably hear it in the camera. My door is closed. Anyways, the subliminal I'm making is a all-in-one type of subliminal. And it's on a cellular level. It's not just like everyone else's subliminals where they're like, I have unlimited power. I am abundant with money. No, these actually give ways that you're going to change. Like, it says the LR5P, I think I said that wrong, LRP5 gene doesn't transmit and your bone density can just keep growing. And you have no myostatin because of uh, the gene just isn't there. It, it tells you the reason why the genes are mutating, which is really good. I'm going to incorporate some self-defense in there, but honestly, if your bones are dense enough, it won't matter if someone tries to stab you or someone kicks you in the head or punches you, it doesn't matter because it's not going to hurt you. Picture Wolverine's antimanium skeleton. It's a pretty good example. More things that are going to be in this subliminal are the sun, sunlight makes my body produce all amino acids and I actually listed every single name for every amino acid in the subliminal affirmations. And this is just going to be like a big project. So it might not even be done by the 4th of July. I'm glad and I want to thank all my viewers for staying with me because, wow, it's taken me a long time because, one, I'm, I'm poor, but I'm slowly becoming more wealthy. And it's happening. 
2017 is the year of change in learning for me. I don't know about you, but yeah. And remember this, the next time you're watching a Bruce Lee movie, none of those moves would actually work in a street fight. Just putting that out there. So stop telling me to make a Bruce Lee subliminal. There are plenty of them and they don't work. Sorry to be a Debbie Downer, but that's just the honest truth of it. You cannot spin around a nunchuck and smack people in the face without there even being a video showing him doing that. It's just a picture of Bruce Lee. Can't. I've already said that in other videos. I can't stand the subliminals where there are affirmations scrolling up and there's no example. It's just a picture. And I mean to some extent that works. The stimulus, because you, you see the image and then you were, your subconscious remembers the emotions, the feelings, and the videos that go with that character, but it doesn't use them. Oh my god, do you hear that? That's called the old person effect. From my standpoint, it sounds like a girl's having sex, but I, she might be dying. I don't know. The two sound the same sometimes in movies. Last thing I'll say is extremely random. Scientists are making um, uh, human female embryos out of skin cells, so you won't need a woman anymore to have children. I'm probably going that route. Unless I find my soulmate, which may happen. May. Yeah. But do I really want one?